Daniel. But it is not just to praise the Lord for the life of Daniel. It is something that is to serve as a model, as an example for you and for me. He said in this verse 15, I search for the meaning. I search for the meaning. And that's what should happen when you read the Bible. You take time and you seek for the meaning. You're searching, you're finding, what does this mean? How can I understand this? What does this imply in my life? How do I apply this to my life? What's the fulfillment of this? And when it comes to be fulfilled, what will be the implication in my life, in my family, in the church, and in the world at large? And you find that this was the attitude of Daniel, he sought for the meaning. We're looking at Daniel chapter 7, Daniel chapter 7. I'm looking at verse 15 and verse 16. Daniel 7, verses 15 and 16. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit, in the midst of my body, and the vision of my head troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. I asked him, I asked him, he was always searching. He wasn't satisfied only to see the vision. He must know the meaning. He wasn't satisfied only to have revelation from God. He must know the meaning. He wasn't satisfied just to I know, I know, I know. He must know exactly what the implication is, what the interpretation is. And therefore he said in verse 16, I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. That's the attitude you ought to have. Let's look at chapter 9, chapter 9, verse 21. In chapter 9, verse 21, it says, Ye, whilst I was yet speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, that's an angel, whom I have seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation and informed me and talked with me and said to Daniel, I am now called for to give this skill and understanding. I am come to give you skill and understanding. He didn't want to just have a suggestion, an idea, an impression in his mind, in his heart, and just say, I feel this is the meaning. I feel this is the interpretation. Not what he felt, not what he thought. He wanted to know the interpretation, exact interpretation and meaning from the Lord himself. That's why I was praying, and that's why God, in answer and response to the prayer that he prayed, that's why he sent that angel to him that will give him the exact interpretation and the exact meaning of what he had seen. In verse 23, at the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved, therefore understand the matter and consider the vision. Understand the matter and consider the vision. If you are a man like Daniel, a woman like Daniel, if you are a person that says, yes, I want to understand, I want you to know, and then you get on your knees, and after the Bible study, you just don't finish the Bible study and then rush out, you want to understand, oh Lord, let it be deep in my heart, in my soul. I want a real understanding of this. You know, in those olden days when we first started the Bible study, that's what we did. We came to the Bible study and we learned at the Bible study. And after the Bible study, we spent time, quality time in prayer. Praying in, soaking in, sinking in the word of God that we have learned. And then asking the Lord, oh Lord, how does this apply to me? What can I do with this? What's the meaning of this? What's the application implication of this in my heart, in my life? How does this affect my relationship, my interaction, my friendship? How does this apply my proposals and my purpose in life? How does this apply to my working place? How does this apply to my interaction with people? That's why in those early days, the word of God had such a great impact in our lives. And I pray that those good old days will come back again in Jesus' name. We didn't just study. We didn't just come to the Bible study. We made sure that we knelt in prayer. We prayed very much that this word will be applied in our heart. And that's the reason why we had such a deep, deep Christian life at that time. And I pray that those days will come back again. In chapter 10 of Daniel, Daniel chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 10. Daniel chapter 10, verse 10. And behold, and hand touched me, 
which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling in verse 12, and he said unto me, Fear not, Daniel. For from the first day that thou didst search thine heart to understand. You see that? He searched his heart to understand. He made up his mind, I'm going to understand this. And he purposed it in his heart, I'm going to understand this. It wasn't just a cursory reader of the word. It wasn't just somebody that, you know, just, just to flip through the pages of scripture. He went deep into the scriptures and he wanted to know the meaning. And he searched his heart to understand. That's the attitude a lot wants you to have. That's the attitude the Lord wants us to have, that will set your mind and set your heart to understanding the word of God. You'll not be in a hurry. You stay in that word and you stay on that word and then you think on that or you pray on that word and you're asking the Lord, oh Lord, I want to understand this. It is the understanding of the word that brings transformation. It that brings regeneration. It's the understanding of the word. It's not just the reading of the word. It's not just the reading so many chapters of the Bible. It is when you dig deep into it. And then you say, I'm setting my heart to understand this. I must have an understanding of the word. It is that understanding that will make a very great impact and effect upon your heart and upon your life. We're told in that verse 12, it says, From the very first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand. The implication is that it wasn't just one day. From the first day to the second day to the third day. In fact, it took him about 23, 21 days, that is three weeks, just searching, just, search, just digging, just looking at the word. Because until he had a proper understanding, he would not stop. And that should be your attitude and my attitude. That is what is going to produce results. That people will know you have been at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ, studying the word, digesting the word, taking in the word, understanding the word, and applying the word to your life and to your heart. From that very first day, you did set your heart to understand and to chasten thyself uh, before thy God. Thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. In verse 14, now. I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. For yet the vision is for many days. You'll see then the angel came and said, I want you to understand. That's what I'm saying, for you to understand. I pray that the Spirit of God will come upon every one of us and give us real, real understanding in his watch in Jesus' name. When Daniel saw the vision, he did not understand, neither could he discern its meaning. Though God had given Daniel knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom, even as far back as chapter 1 verse 17, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams, but in this particular case, he did not understand the vision. So he sought for the meaning. He prayed to God that he might have the revelation and the illumination and the interpretation of the mystery made known unto him. God sent an angel called Gabriel to reveal the true meaning of the vision to him. I just told you something now I said in chapter 1 of Daniel. Daniel had been given the gift of the understanding of visions and dreams. And yet, this particular one came, he didn't understand. And he asked the Lord. That's the same thing you are going to find among the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 13. In Matthew chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 11. Yes, we have some basic understanding. And the disciples of Jesus Christ had some basic understanding. But even then, whenever something was said, something was preached, and something was spoken that they didn't understand, they did not just take everything for granted. Okay, we have understanding. We are the children of God, and we understand the mysteries of the kingdom. They will seek for the meaning before the Lord. Matthew chapter 13, verse 11. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. It is given unto you. You are a special class of people, peculiar people. 
cleansed people, saved people, regenerated people, children of God. The Spirit of God bearing witness in your heart. You are the children of God. This is given to you to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. But to them it is not given. But then look at verse 36. Verse 36. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. You know what they were doing? They were asking for the meaning. We don't understand that. You said, it's been given unto us to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. But this is one of the mysteries we don't understand yet. And then they asked for the meaning. In fact, Jesus also tells us in Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 24, I'm reading to you from verse 15. He says, he's saying, it's not only Daniel that ought to understand, that you too, you need to understand. You must understand. Because it is the understanding of that word, especially the revelation, the vision, the prophecy that we're reading about in Daniel. It is the understanding of that that will lead you to be able to actually stand, stand for the truth. And know that whatever persecution or temptation may come your way, it is better to endure whatever it is now than to wait for that time of great abomination and great tribulation coming upon the world. For that thing to come upon you, it will be a terrible thing at that time. Matthew chapter 24, I'm reading verse 15. It says, And when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. That's Jesus Christ telling us, telling his disciples. He said, you will see when that time comes. And you must understand. If you don't have an understanding, what will you do that day when that thing comes? I pray God will give us understanding. I say God will give us understanding. The angel Gabriel was to explain the infallible truth and meaning of the vision to Daniel. When the angel came near, Daniel lost his strength and he fell upon his face. When he fell upon his face, he wasn't worshipping the angel. He was so much afraid and his physical strength failed him at the appearance of the angel. He was strengthened by the touch of that angel. Then the angel made him to know the meaning and the certainty of the vision. We'll come back to Daniel now. Daniel chapter 8. Daniel chapter 8. I go over that verse 15 again. And we're reading all through to verse 22. Daniel chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 15. And it came to pass when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision and sought for the meaning. And sought for the meaning. He said, then behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. And I had a man's voice between the banks of Eli, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. Make this man to understand the vision. You see, there are some people that they don't read everything in the Word of God. They just read, and then they begin to bring their, their suggestions in their mind, and their ideologies in their own mind. They are self-made ideologies. And they say, I think this will be in the interpretation. Daniel was not like that. And a true church, the true church will not be like that. And a true teacher of the word of God will not be like that. You'll get the interpretation from the spirit of God, from the mind of God, and from Christ, the living word himself. Here we're told, in, a, a man said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. So he came near in verse 17, where I stood and went he came, I was afraid and fell upon my face. But he said unto me, Understand, O son of man, for the time of the end shall be the vision. Understand, son of man, there's a time of the end. The angel said, There's going to be a time of the end. You know, there are some people that think the world will continue forever. Some people think, We're here, we're here. And they live a save every day will all be coming. But the angel said, there's going to be a time of the end. And it says, these prophecies were written about, it will be at the time of the end, when everything in detail will be fulfilled. In verse 18, now, as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep on my face toward the ground. 
but he touched me and set me upright and he said behold i will make thee know what shall be in the last edge of the indignation there'll be a time of indignation a time of wrath a time of tribulation and the angel said daniel i'm going to make you understand what is going to be at the time of that indignation for at the time appointed the end shall be at the time appointed there's a time in the timetable of god that's appointed for the end to come and then in verse in verse 20 it says the ram which thou sawest have been two horns are the kings of media and persia and in verse 21 and the rock gold is the king of grecia and the great horn that is between his eyes and the first king now that been broken where where whereas for stood up in the for it for kingdom shall stand up out of the nation but not in his power now we've seen in the case of daniel that an angel came to make the interpretation give him that interpretation the question now is do angels still come to reveal the meaning of the prophetic revelation to us today well ours is a better dispensation and it is the dispensation of the Holy Ghost. It is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit himself, who is greater than all angels, higher than all angels, who guides us into all truth, showing us things to come. Look at John chapter 14, verse 26. Today is not just an angel that comes to us. It's not Gabriel that comes to us. It's not any other personality that comes to us. It's somebody greater than angel greater than Gabriel, and greater than any of those personalities that revealed anything to Daniel, the Holy Ghost himself comes to reveal the things to come unto us today. In John chapter 14, verse 26. John 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, he shall teach you all things. When you read the scriptures today, when you see the revelation today and you say i don't understand this how can i understand this is the holy ghost that now teaches us all things and then he says and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever i said unto you john chapter 16 verse 13 john chapter 16 verse 13 how be it when he the spirit of truth has come he will guide you into all truth the truth about prophecy and the truth about the meaning of what Daniel saw. And the truth about the coming, the, the coming tyrants, the coming antichrist. The truth, the Lord shows us everything up by his spirit. And he says, for he shall speak of, he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak. And he will show you what? Things to come, things to come. What Daniel was speaking about, those are things to come. And it's the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit that shows us today those things to come. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 10. But God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit. You see that? It's the Spirit of God today that gives us the revelation that gives us the illumination, that gives us the interpretation of the word. We don't depend upon angels anymore, but we depend upon the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. And it says, God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep, deep things of God. It's the Holy Ghost now that keeps searching. And it searches those deep things, those great things, those prophetic things, those things revealed in Daniel and in Revelation and in many other parts of the Bible that the ordinary man with the natural mind cannot understand. It is the Spirit of God that searches all things today and reveals them to us in verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of a man? Save the spirit of man, which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. You know, sometimes when you read the Bible, you say, this part is difficult for me. 
I cannot understand this part. But you understand, the Holy Ghost does not have any difficulty. He understands every part of the Word of God. And if you will depend upon the Spirit of Truth and the Spirit of Christ and the Spirit of God, is going to make everything very clear and very plain unto you. Even the things of God knows no man but the Spirit of God. In verse 12, for we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also will speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. In the case of Daniel, an angel, the angel Gabriel taught him and showed him and revealed to him the interpretation of the word. But now it says, for those of us who are New Testament believers, it is the Holy Ghost himself that teaches us comparing spiritual things with spiritual. I'm looking at Ephesians chapter 3 verses 4 and 5. Ephesians chapter 3 verses 4 and 5. Still emphasizing the fact that it's the Holy Ghost that reveals to us today the mysteries of the kingdom, the mysteries of prophetic writings in the scriptures. Ephesians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 4. Whereby, when ye 